I am back with um, Doug and Stephen, and I want to talk a little bit about the kind of tools and resources that you use in your classroom. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the favorite tools that you use um, when you're teaching statistics tasks? Yeah. Some of the tools that I like, I like decks of cards okay. and um, dice. Those are things that the students understand and they can work with. But I also use Fathom, mm -hmm. and I've written some simulations using R, yeah. where I can kind of present the results to the students, you know, splash a big histogram or something up on the up on yeah. the board. Yeah. So that's typically the approach that I take. Okay. All right. So when you're in um, something like Fathom, so Fathom mm -hmm. is a dynamic statistics environment. Right. Um, what are some of the, What are some of the ways that you use that? Um, I use it for to, to do simulations. Okay. I use it to collect data. I have when the students are collecting their data, I have them just go right up to my computer, mm -hmm. enter things into Fathom, mm -hmm. and you know, we kind of watch a dot plot grow or a histogram grow as mm -hmm. they're entering yeah. entering data. And then the students, you know, something you know, funny will happen. You know, someone will enter a number that's unusual, and the students just jump all over that and say, "That value can't be right. <laughs> right. That one's really strange. Right, right. You know, what's going on there? Yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's just a data entry error. Right, yeah. right. Or sometimes it's an sometimes, anomaly that we exactly. need to, you know, appreciate. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, what about you? My tools are going to overlap a lot. Um, physical tools, cards, index mm -hmm. cards. I do mm -hmm. a lot of shuffling yeah. index yeah. cards to simulate random assignment or mm -hmm. random allocation, depending on where, where you teach in your in your vocab. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we simulate that way. Um, the the pennies spinning and flipping pennies is a great way to, to start right. thinking about inference and chance. Mm -hmm. um, I use dice sometimes. The technology tools that I use are also Fathom, uh, a new set of tools that's really only recently been made available and free um, are applets. Yeah. And yeah. and the applets, there's a couple of applet sites that I go to. The Rossman Chance applets yes. are great are for great. demonstrating a lot of statistical concepts. Mm -hmm. um, there's what, what are brand new uh, SPA applets. It's for a, a textbook. I'm not endorsing the textbook. Um, but they're free. It's staplet.com is the okay. website forward slash SPA. Great. We'll and provide those links for you. Yeah, and they're um, they. The, what I like about those applets is they start with the data structure, mm -hmm. categorical, quantitative, mm -hmm. one or two, and then they progress from data analysis all the way down through inference. Mm -hmm. You can't get to inference without thinking about the data first, uh -huh. right? Right. and that's nice. And then the the third set that I like a lot is um, the stat key yes um by From by lock. the locks yeah yeah and stat key is nice if you are especially if you're a bootstrapper mm -hmm. i mean there's there's the best online free bootstrapping tool to get up and running quickly mm -hmm. um but they also have randomization tests and just data analysis simple exploratory data analysis tools yeah so those are my main technology tools that are applets and then, like Stephen, I also use Fathom quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's usually for demonstrations of simulations because it's really visual. Um, shout out to Bill Finzer. Thank you. Keep <laughs> Fathom forever, please. Um, really. Yeah. Um, and it, there's, there's statistical software, but it all assumes that you already know how to do statistics right. and what this, the concepts are. Yeah. There, there's not as much. I mean, Fathom is the main really flexible simulation tool mm -hmm. that, that I use that, that I can without too much of a learning curve set up simulations pretty quickly right right so speak so I'm just gonna give a shout out also to Bill so um, Bill and I are actually working together right now I don't know if you have seen his new online free tool called CODAP the no, common I'm online not. data analysis platform and um, so it, it is in its infancy and um, uh, we have a grant right now where we are. I meet with him every other week, and we are trying to build it so that it has um, Fathom and Tinker like Tinker Plot like capabilities in it, and to continually expand its capabilities. It already can do quite a bit. It doesn't do simulations yet, and that's one of the the key things that we're working on. We're oh, working yeah. on an interface design for that right now. So um, some free versions of Fathom-like tool is coming soon. I look forward to seeing <laughs> I know, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we've got, we've got links to, I mean, so you can get on CODAP now. But uh, one, the nice thing about CODAP is that it's open source. It's, it's, he's building it as a platform. The code is out there on GitHub. And um, uh, so anybody can take it and build upon it as well. But uh, 
you make know. stats nerds happy. This yes. guy, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, we. I mean, teachers need free stuff in their right. classroom. Right. You know, districts and easy to use. Easy to use. Mm -hmm. That's a real big key. I absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah. So when you're using these different tools, whether they're hands on or on the computer, how does it how does it benefit your students? What are the why why should students engage in those things? Go ahead. You, I think in in large part having an opportunity to manipulate something, to do something. Yeah. You know, enter the data and then say, okay, let's take a sample of 10,000 and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And maybe do that over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it gives them, and they, they like the technology. They do. They, they, they do. They're, they're, and they like the hands-on stuff, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it just gives them an opportunity to work with something that they're comfortable with. Right. So I think the biggest benefit is when you start with uh, physical simulations mm -hmm. that we described. Mm -hmm. And I particularly, I'm a fan of dot plots, mm -hmm. more so than histograms for teaching purposes. I agree. Mm -hmm. And because, I mean, I it's case-based statistics, <laughs> right? Yeah. So when a student goes up and puts a sticker on, usually they can attach meaning to that sticker and that number right. because they themselves calculate it. Right. And in, and I also run another activity with pennies where they I have about a thousand of them in a bowl. That's our population, and they physically grab and and take samples mm -hmm. of pennies themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, this I mean, is why Doug buys so many pennies on eBay. I no. do, I do. <laughs> I buy a lot of pennies. I, I have a budget just for pennies. Um, so so I think I mean, what do we want students to do? We want them to take these abstract concepts, I mean, sampling distributions are the most abstract they concept. Are. They are. Who thinks about repeated sampling ever? No mm -hmm. one. And, mm -hmm. and in practice, we don't do that. I mean, if we can, we just take a one single larger sample, right? Right. We don't take multiple smaller samples. So I think the, the best chance that students have to understand what's going on is to calculate the number themselves in as real and tangible a way, mm -hmm. and then make a dot. And then those technologies that we talked about it just build more dots for us. Right, right. And so, but they have to understand what the dot means exactly. at right. first. And and all the time, when you, add, when, you, when you make dot plots from the start of the course to the end, one of the key questions is, what does that dot represent? Yeah. Right? Well, explain that dot to me. What is that all about? Yeah. And so I think technology, what it buys us is the chance to build empirical distributions quickly, mm -hmm. um, but also for students to connect physical to technological representations. Yeah. yeah. And and so then maybe histograms and things like that that get spit out of, of software are a little less mysterious, right? They they have more meaning yeah. attached to them. Right, right.